I'm working on the skull in here. I have a compressor that gives me some compressed air, then I use this air abrasive unit that takes the compressed air, adds powder, I can increase the powder setting or reduce the powder setting, increase the level of air pressure here, and then I use this large homemade glove box that's made big enough to fit the skull inside to give you a sense of scale. There you go, there's my hand just looking at the orbit of the skull. So later on I will be utilising sodium bicarbonate powder and compressed air to clean up some of the skull, uh, remove some of the resin, remove some of the paint so that we can see what is bone, what's plaster and what's wood and what's polystyrene. That long tube there is my extract that takes away the excess powder into my extract unit. So this area here, this really bulbous section, is one of the, uh, the biggest sort of carved areas here. And it's a, uh, it's a bone, called, well it should be the bone, called the bassi occipital, which is at the very back of the skull. But we know this is actually carved, probably made out of wood or something like that. But some of the bones surrounding this are actually real and genuine. So we need to actually physically take this apart, which Nigel Larkin will, take, uh, will actually do. And then we'll be able to examine what real portions are underneath here because there are elements underneath the, the bassi occipital which are actually real and we need to see them. What I'm about to do is just remove this small piece of bone uh, because we need to shift the whole of this top part of the skull off. This should be attached to this piece and I want to remove this so that Dean can describe and measure this particular element here. Uh, and this piece here will end up being somewhere slightly different by the time we've finished. To do that I'm using a preparation tool, it's an engraving pen that runs to a compressor and I've just got to remove the glue. I've tried to dissolve it with uh, some acetone but I'm going to remove it mechanically instead because it hasn't dissolved. I should explain that I'm actually removing the glue, I'm not engraving the bone, it's just a really thick piece of glue and gap filler that I'm removing in between the pieces of bone. This is the piece of bone I've just removed. All of this here, this is the gap filler, a mixture of alvar, which is a glue, jute and kaolin, it's known as AJK dough. So all that is just the filler, this is the bone, and I was just dissolving and removing this bit. What we're doing next is we need to move this whole section away because that needs to come up slightly and forward slightly and the one place it is joined to the rest of the skull, the lower jaw, is just here. So again I'm using the pneumatic tool to remove the plaster of Paris away from the rod that this is secured to. You can probably see that the skull's looking a bit different. What we've been doing is I've been dissolving the glue, weakening it, taking out the gap fillers that are in there. And all these little bits here are the remainder of the glue and gap filler that came out from between the various bones that we've had to uh, remove. You can see that I've managed to remove this piece of the lower jaw because it was set right back here and it needs to come forward and join together a lot better. We've obviously taken off the front of the skull that was here, that's the premaxilla and the maxilla. Yep. And importantly, we've got to the really interesting pieces that are at the back of the skull, and they come apart nicely as individual bones, which Dean can tell you a bit about. Yeah, so we've got literally about six or seven individual skull bones, which are really nicely preserved, all three-dimensional. There's one we uh, took apart earlier, and this one is pretty much at the right at the back of the skull. It's one of the most fascinating pieces about this, uh, this skull. And actually, I've examined about, about a thousand specimens and I've never had the opportunity to handle one of these before. So this is very, very exciting. So these six elements here are from the back of the skull of this ichthyosaur. And they are really, really quite nice. 
this big one, for example, this here. If we turn that over so you can see the inside, the lighting's quite nice. Well, this actually, you're looking at where the, the brain probably would have been of the ichthyosaur, so that's really, really rare. Very, very cool stuff. Now, aside from the skull bones, whilst Nigel has taken apart the specimen, we also have many of these isolated teeth. So uh, it's quite nice. We'll that's really nice there. because we can look at them as individuals, photograph them really up close, describe them, and we've been able now to describe this ichthyosaur properly for the first time. It's not really been written up before, and we're going to be able to do a very detailed job because we can get at these individual bones you don't normally get to see. So yeah, so very, very exciting stuff. Yeah, still a few more to come off and a few more to clean. Yeah.